Hi there. This is the newest uh, tool in my toolbox. Um, I just got this, uh, pretty new to this, obviously, since I've never operated a lathe except clear back in high school, um, which has been a few years ago. And so I was always fascinated with, <clears throat> I was always fascinated with machining and the accuracy required to make parts fit like they do, machine fit parts. So I opted to uh, teach myself this and with the help of a lot of people on YouTube, Blondie Hacks and Cloud42 and a lot of those really skilled people that have figured this out. Uh, uh, Abom79 who's a professional machinist makes great videos. Uh, I really, uh, really am enjoying learning how to operate this machine. I've made a, even made a couple of my own off-the-cuff projects with it so far. I made some uh, thumb screws for my uh, bench grinder and I made some uh, a couple of special tools to help make it easier to work on my my big Indian motorcycle that I have. Um, so this is a I, kind of a neat machine. It's a 10 by 22 inch Grizzly. It's uh, model number G0752Z. The Z means that it has the this uh, DRO capability on it and which is kind of nice because the, the DRO tells you where your carriage is and, and all of that. You can do a lot with uh, you know the DRO without having to use indicators, but I, I also have a full set of indicators as well that I'm learning how to use. There's a lot that goes into this and a lot of accessories beyond just purchasing the lathe that you need to, to get, but one of the first things that became pretty clear to me that I wanted to change immediately was this. This uh, four-way tool post that requires you to shim the cutting bits in there so that you can get the tip, the cutting tip of your bit right at the center of your chuck. So where uh, it's very important to have that at the right elevation otherwise you'll it won't cut right. Won't, your bits won't cut good and things will happen. So each time that you make a tool change you either have to rotate this to the next tool which means you have however many of them in here you have four options and or you uh, have to take the one tool out and then re-zero the next one using a bunch of uh, basically small shims to uh, get it up to the right height. So it's, it's not a great thing. Um, I wanted to go with a quick change tool post which looks like this. I put, I put this one back on just so you can see what the stock tool post was like. This is the tool post I bought and I bought this one off of eBay. I'll include a link in the description. This is the Bostar size AXA. Uh, of course it's imported from China. Um, at any rate, uh, but then so is the whole lathe. So there's that. Uh, there, the problem that you have with this tool post is that it won't fit right onto the lathe. So when I bought the lathe, I asked the guy, hey, can you sell me a quick change tool post kit that I can just change this out right away? And he said, do you have a mill? I said, no, I don't have a mill. And he goes, well, you need a mill because you'll need to mill the T piece that comes with the quick change tool post to fit the slot right here. So this is the, the T piece right here. I'll, I'll bring it out. I'll take this off so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the T piece. Uh, thus it's got a T shaped prof profile fits the T slot up on top of the compound here. So this is the way it comes. Well, the, the downside of that is, is on your AXA quick change tool post, this is much smaller, this, uh, this hole and this thread. Um, I saw one fellow that on, on YouTube, I'll, I'll, like I say, if I can find the link, I'll include it so you can watch his video. He did a little different take. When he got his AXA tool post, he turned, this is, for comparison, the two different uh, uh, deals here that, that uh, hold it. Now, you know, with the naked eye and not using indicators, you can tell that this is different from that. This is much lighter, smaller, 
uh, thread diameter is significantly different. These have threads on both ends. So he, he cut his down, turned it in his lathe, and shaved it down and then re-threaded it with this thread to fit the stock T-piece. I thought, why do I want to do that? I mean, that's not a bad approach. It certainly works. But why wouldn't I want to keep this as strong as possible for rigidity's sake? So uh, rigidity on the lathe is like king. So it's a simple deal. I just bought another T-piece from Grizzly. They had them in stock. I bought two of them. They were $4 each while I was up there. And uh, I just overboard it and threaded the larger one into it. So that's all you have to do. You just overbore this and then put this thread on it. I'm sorry, I can't recall right at the, minute, right at the moment what thread it is, but if you're going to try something like this, I assume you know how to measure thread pitches. It's metric thread, I'm sure. Uh, I can't recall exactly what it was, but at any rate, uh, it's the same on the bottom, it's just shorter. So this slides in to the T-slot on the lathe. T-slot is very precision. There's a couple of Allen wrenches that come with this lathe and there's allens in this little fixture here, this little t-piece that hold it that you just screw it then tight into the compound this is the compound this one and uh, just give those a little snug and that holds the t-piece in and you can see if you compare these again, what you're looking at here is a, a lot different, um, you know. So uh, then your your bow star is able to slip right on there like so, and then this big nut goes on top of it. It's a I think it's a 19, if I recall. No, it's a 22, and then you just give that a little snug I'm trying to stay out of your way here give that a little snug and that that thing is ready to go so it comes if you buy the one I bought off eBay um, it comes with these tool holders that look like this right here you probably I mean if you're looking at this video you know what this is this is the height adjustment you don't need to dink around with any shims or anything you just Throw this lever open. Throw that lever open. Let me tighten this again. Tightened it before I had it opened up and threw it off. Okay. You just take this tool holder, you drop it on here, give that a little cinch, and this tool holder, because I've used this tool before uh, as a turning tool, a uh, high speed steel turning tool. Um, it's a 60 degree left hand tool. Anyway, uh, I went ahead and already zeroed this to the center of my chuck. Or you can, the easiest way to do it is to just put a center in your tailpiece. This is after you've set your lathe up. You've already leveled the ways and you've made sure that your, t your tail stock is centered to the chuck and there's a whole procedure for that. But then what all, all you have to do at, at that point is uh, go ahead and, and turn this. You can, it has two different tool positions that you can use on it. So you can flip the tool backwards like this, and then you can run this back. And I'm gonna get in a little closer so you can see. Run this back, run it out a little bit, And hold on, let's let's dip down just a tad bit here. Okay. We're gonna run this back a little, run this back out. What we're trying to do is get this cutting point identical height to the dead center that's in that tailpiece. So that's uh that's where you need to do it. Now you can imagine on the other deal you'd be putting shims in there. And monkeying around with that and then going back it just makes this makes this setup here just makes the lathe so much better to operate 
Um, hang on a minute, I'm trying to monkey with my damn gimbal here. Okay, so much better to operate. This is one that I ground myself. This is a brass cutting one here. And uh, so if I, you can see it, I can change bits that quick and they're lined up, they're ready to go. So that's the beauty of the quick change tool post. And, and if you look down in my, in my drawer here, you can see that I got a whole bunch of these and I think seven of them came with this tool post including this big one that holds a boring bar. I don't have a boring bar yet, but I haven't quite graduated to using a boring bar, but I got my my cutoff blade. I've got, uh, here's another high-speed steel one that uh, I personally ground myself. It cuts wonderful. It's great surface finish. This is a, a, a gouging or a groove cutting tool. You got a couple of different uh, high-speed steel turning tools back there all ready to go and a knurler. I've been doing some knurling. That's kind of cool to do. So, if you have a mind to it, that's that's the way I'd go about um, about doing this. It just seems to me it's a lot easier than than trying to turn this down, and then you you have full strength rigidity in the larger size. Um, I don't know what you'd call that, that this, this threaded uh, fastener that holds the tool post on. And uh, so it's, it seems to be very high quality uh, and I can attest to the repeatability of its cutting and everything like that. It, it, it's really a, a pretty slick deal. And like I say, the, it's just a, it, an eBay purchase I'll, that I'll go ahead and uh, put the the link in there. The other thing that um, recently I I was told about was that you kind of want to uh, put a shield on this to keep the stuff that's being cut right here from falling off. And I, Claw 42 has a little uh, thing he made that's just a basically a piece of sheet metal. It's drilled so you can get to your ball oiler. So you want to oil that before each lathe use. And then it just hooks into these two holes, bolts in these two holes right here. These holes are from the following rest that comes with the lathe. They, it rides right here. If you're you, cutting way out here and you need a rest, if you're getting chatter, you can put that on and that will help reduce any tool chatter if you're cutting way back here. Um, there's also a steady rest too that goes on the waves. That's pretty slick. And uh, so the, the lathe is nice. It comes with a lot of uh, different things, but this I think if you're gonna do this is probably uh, the first thing that you'll want to do. So beyond that, I bought this cabinet. This is not actually even the cabinet that comes or that is for this lathe, but it does fit this lathe, which is meaning the bolt holes that hold it uh, down. And so the cabinet has, you know, two cabinets there, three drawers. I've got a lot of my stuff in here. I'm, I'm this is in my, I'm in my barn right now, so it's a small barn, but, uh, you know, humidity is kind of an issue out here, so I keep heat in here in this area of it so that I, my stuff won't get rusty, and, uh, and then I keep them, all my stuff in these little Tupperwares, and I just keep them co coated with uh, a good quality uh, rust inhibitor. I haven't had any rust at all, and I keep everything pretty clean and oiled up. So I got like my, these are three jaw, three jaws for this chuck that, three jaw chuck that are outside ones. Here's a couple more knurling tools that it came with another thing. Um, this is uh, my one, two, three machinist blocks. This is a good set. I measured these all, I mic these. These are good, these are accurate. And uh, so I have a couple of those and that's for, you know, a multitude of things actually squaring your tool post to the chuck and a bunch of stuff like that. Um, so I've got some, you know, a place to so store a lot of the the stuff that I have to um, have to to work with the lathe. And, uh, you know, files, I've got my, um, that's a kit that you put, uh, uh, it's a tap and die holder. 
type deal. I have four jaw chuck in there. I have a back plate, or, um, you know, tea for tea nuts to clamp odd shapes to the chuck. Um, I've got in here in this one. I've got a lot of my. Um, I've got some 12L14 machining, free machining steel in there. There's a bunch more behind here. I've got some C360 free machining brass. And I've got my snap gauges and just a lot of small parts. My, my uh, books that I use a lot, which is the engineer's black book and the, and the one on fasteners and then, and then the engineer one. That's for doing all your threads and threading. I've got down below there, you can see there's some lathe dogs and scotch bright and emery cloth and grease rags and the foot my two rests are in here that's the the steady rest and that so that it's nice to have this cabinet for some extra storage for a bench top lathe i just decided to make it into this floor style we're using this cabinet and this, this cabinet has a heavy steel plates underneath here that are drilled and tapped for the lathe to bolt down to it and then I had to shim five thousandths under the back right corner to get the ways level but that, that and there's a whole procedure for that I recommend Blondie Hacks if you want to find out Blondie Hacks uh, has a machine website she's a, a sharp cookie good machinist uh, and uh, at least for a hobby machinist she's she knows what she's doing and makes real nice parts and so and she's self-taught from what i understand and she puts on a good class she's a good teacher so blondie hacks on youtube here if you and also clow 49 really good c-l-o-u-g-h i believe 49 and a bomb 79 but he's the real deal he's he's like a professional machinist so i got anyway i got some tools in here you know that i use on the lathe a lot and uh I've got in here, I've got like, that's my caliper, my middle toy dial caliper, and I have a lot of uh, high speed steel cutting bits in here that I've collected here and there, and um, if I can get it open, that I've collected here and there, I can get it open with it in here, and um, yikes, not the deal is here. Uh, that I've collected here and there. I've got some cutoff bits. I've got some various different different things. And um, so you get you just to get to start having to collect things because the lathe only comes with the bare minimum of stuff. And um, so you got to get it all. So that one's the cutter. So that's kind of what I've got going on. And um, so if if you look up here you can see that uh i've got a lot of my chemicals and that, all of that stuff is uh, i put this shelf up for those and fluid film it's rust protectant wd-40 of course whey oil cutting oil i have big jugs of those too gallon jugs of those behind me in a rack and then um i made these little shelves this is teak i had some teak laying around from well, when I restored my big boat and uh, I didn't really want to use it for this but it was so nice I just decided what the heck so I went ahead and, and made these two shelves out of teak this one has a piece of steel on top of it so that these magnetic holders uh, so that these magnetic holders can you know sit up there without falling off and they're easy to get to I don't need to hunt around the cabinet to get at them um, got my, uh, this is the ball oiler oil, it's an ISO 32 oil. This is an ISO 68, that's whey oil. Uh, and um, it's whey oil, uh, the cutting oil, um, so three different kinds of oil. Um, and as far as making these, pretty simple, I just cut them out, rounded the edges, took a, routed a, a round nose on the, on the upper edge, and made an aluminum. Um, angle iron aluminum uh, mount and uh, that uh, is nice because you know I just drilled them with a Forstner bit so nice round hole drill it from the one side and when it gets close first drill a pilot hole then drill it part way through then drill it from the other drill it from both sides to get a nice clean hole on both sides you know break out the bottom of your your shelf 
that's just a piece of sheet metal I cut out with a side grinder and screwed down. This I bought off eBay. I don't remember, not eBay, Amazon. It was red when I got it. Um, Rust-Oleum makes this green paint that matches the cabinet. The, the one that's on the lathe is a little lighter, but they make this color too. But I, may, I, I just decided I'd go with this. It's kind of hard to find. I managed to find it at a local Ace Hardware of all places. And uh, another thing that I did um is i went ahead and went with um i went ahead with a couple of these baking pans bed bath and beyond there's a three pan set at least at the moment over there they had and uh, i used the medium and the small and the, the small one fits side or long ways under there and then this one fits sideways and they fit perfectly at least on my lathe and uh that gives you uh, an easier cleanup when you're done your big pile of chips. Um, let's see what else. Oh, these guys right here. Uh, if you look at, if you go to YouTube and you watch any of A-Bomb 79 work on his Big Monarch, he's got a, a, a chuck key holder like this on there. I don't know if it's part of the layer that came like that, but I stole that idea. And I just, I just migged a piece of uh, 5 8 I think it's 5 8 uh, it might be three quarter inch uh, uh, water pipe onto a, a big washer and then I, I went ahead and hooked this magnetic mount to it so it stays put same with this um, and then I've got a magnetic tray back here so that the last thing you want is anything coming off of here and falling into your workpiece when it's spinning because if it catches here at a high RPM, it'll probably go through your face, out the back of your head, and into the wall behind you. I, this thing is dangerous and uh, it's not to be operated by fuckwits. Okay, let's just peel that off. It's on there, right? because these things are dangerous it's just sitting here waiting to kill you if you do the wrong thing if you crash this into that while it's spinning i mean it, it will do it you can easily do it you can easily crash your your lathe and when you do that it's a bad idea there's all kinds of things break like gears and all kinds of stuff breaks so you don't want to crash the lathe so you, a pe you only should have people operate this who have made a bit of a study of it beforehand. But at any rate, um, set you back down here. And I also have some reloading equipment in here. Do a little bit of reloading. Um, well, more than a little. At any rate, um, hey, uh, I hope this has been helpful. To you if you want to do a quick change to a post super easy grab it off eBay it comes with like seven tool holders and the other tool holders are the same exact tool holders are available on littlemachineshop.com they have them they're pretty reasonable I, don't, I think they're less than $20 a piece so you can set up as many different tools as you want and just quick change them in and out very sweet uh, makes the lathe work uh, so much much easier so much less time it still takes a lot of time in here when you don't know what you're doing like I don't but um, it, but it's fun times and that's why I'm doing it so um, I just I just take and get e e either you're never gonna put this back on I'm not I can tell you that um, it's gonna sit here you know, you know taking up space until maybe I switch up to a bigger lathe or somebody else has this lathe but um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go back to that um, this is the way to fly and for a hundred and thirty bucks hundred and forty bucks uh, probably free shipping I can't remember and uh, that's a pretty good deal so hope this has been helpful to you and uh, I couldn't find but one video about somebody trying to put one of these on this lathe and how they had done it and my approach is just a little different so uh, at any rate have a good day